Hello and welcome to probably one of my favorite conversations I'm going to have. We're going to be talking everything oral hygiene with the incredible Dr. Nina Bell. So if you haven't had the pleasure of already meeting or hearing anything that Dr. Nina has said before, I'm here to pass the mic over and let you introduce yourself. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I'm so excited to be here again with you. My name is Dr. Nina Bal. I am an aesthetic dental surgeon and I've been looking after my clients Steve, for now over 10 years. I would say that the common mistakes that I see amongst my clients is the fact that they brush their teeth too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I normally uh, say is to actually um, brush them for at least one minute at least. Okay. Then what I'm noticing is that they tend to brush the, the, the teeth with the, with, with the wrong movement. So they, they use like a very horizontal motion uh, and that can actually be the, the detrimental for the gum. So what I normally say is to use more like a circular motion. So really okay. get a little bit more into the marginal, a uh, gentle margin we call it. So getting also the gum. That leads me to another common mistake that I, not, I, I see a lot, a lot of the times just the fact that they normally brush the teeth, but they don't care or they don't look at, you know, at any other areas around. So they don't brush uh, the cheeks, they don't brush the gums, they don't brush the tongue. Mm -hmm. Also, another mistake perhaps is the fact that they, br they, they, they go to the bathroom, brush the teeth straight after lunch, yep. or they will, and we normally recommend just to wait for at least 20 minutes for the saliva to just rebalance the pH of the mouth. And when you find that people brush straight after having something maybe sugary or food, what are some of the kind of detrimental effects that can have on the teeth? So basically, you're not allowing the uh, saliva to rebalance the, the pH of your enamel. So we actually risk is having some erosion of mm -hmm. your enamel. So I don't know if you've ever seen, I'm sure you have um, some, some erosion enamels, yep. some, some uh, abrasion we call them. And then that's more likely for the enamel to actually stain. So that can prone, then you, it can lead you to have more yellowish teeth or more sensitivity okay. and so on and so forth. So one thing I want to ask, Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of variations with teeth. Are all teeth the same? And do we all need to kind of brush teeth with the same intensity? Very good question. So we, we either have a very thin gums or, mm -hmm. or very thick, thick gums. So um, if you have um, a thin periodont periodontist, like we actually call it, yeah. you really need to be super, super careful because what you actually risk is that to create some gums recession. So you basically can chip away your gums. Yeah. So you have to be extra careful if you have some thin periodontal tissues. Whether if you're just born genetically with very thick gums, then you're more lucky in the sense that you don't have to be so careful. However, what I recommend as a professional anyway, is just to use the same circular motion to be very, very gentle on your gums. So you can either have thick periodontal tissues, thin periodontal tissues. So you, you can get away slightly more if genetically you've got thicker gums. Mm -hmm. However, as we all get older, we're all gonna sadly have a bit of gum recession anyway. So you have to be Definitely, definitely more careful um, and gentler if you have thin gums. Can we, is there any tips of actually telling for anyone watching like how thick are? Because even you, you saying that, I'm thinking, how thick are my gums? Yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult question. In the sense that, I mean, I, I would say if, if, you, if you don't have a trained eye, if you're not yeah. used to look at gums, I would <laughs> no. say maybe not. So maybe just, just ask your, your dental professional, your dentist, what yeah, uh, obviously they, they recommend. But it's a very it's a very interesting question. And obviously people don't know what they don't know. So they don't mm -hmm. know what kind of gums they have. And sometimes they, they do know or do realize when it's sadly too late, when they already Exposed. given themselves a gum recession due to the wrong brushing technique. And mm -hmm. then it's kind of too late because then obviously you may need periodontal surgery. Mm -hmm. or, so it's great, I think, to be aware if everyone is watching um, now. So obviously you can have you know, the best brushing technique uh, before you can actually damage your gums. So. And in terms of frequency of brushing, you said yeah. before kind of the, the minute is the kind of sweet spot especially for probably for busy lifestyles. How often should we be brushing our teeth for kind of that optimum oral hygiene health? Yeah, of course. So in, in, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how long to, to, to brush your teeth, we normally say between one and two minutes okay. will be ideal. So one minute, it's fine. It will be just the very, very bare minimum. The minimum, okay. Exactly. So, but I, I say if you can get yourself a goal to brush your teeth for two minutes, that will be much, much better, which actually is a very long time. So yep. it sounds like <laughs> shorter, but two minutes actually is a very long time. In terms of also how often, so we normally say minimum every 12 hours because, okay. so twice a day. Again, 
very bare minimum because 12 hours is the soft spot where the actual plaque and bacteria can go into your enamel mm -hmm. and start to erode your enamel and get into, into a decay potentially. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to leave uh, your plaque on your enamel for 12, for 12 hours. Um, myself, my children, we all brush your teeth three times a day. So again, if you just want to okay. have two as bare minimum, but the goal is to brush your teeth three times a day uh, which is easy after, you know, each time you eat, as long as you wait for about 20 minutes, it's perfect. So 20 minutes, sweet spot, one to two yeah. minutes. Any tips that you found from any clients that don't want to brush their teeth for the two minutes? Any ways to kind of make it a bit more fun? Uh, yes, yeah, so which actually what I'm doing with my children because I'm teaching them to, to, to brush their teeth properly. Yeah. So I just got um, them a little timer. Uh, you can set a timer either, you know, if you're an yeah. adult on your iPhone. And it's actually interesting to do it as a test because you realize, first of all, how long two minutes are. Can feel um, a lot longer. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's it's great to have, you know, the kind of like timing in mind and have a look on your phone. So, so you make sure you, you brush properly. So, because if you want to brush um, your teeth and also all the adjacent area which mm -hmm. need to be brushed, such as uh, your tongue, your gums and your cheeks, it does take one to two minutes. So I know a lot of people clicking onto this video will want me to try and squeeze as much top tips as possible. Of course. So this one's for everyone watching. What are some of the top tips that you've learned along the route when it comes to brushing teeth and oral hygiene? Mm, okay, interesting. So I would say brushing their teeth for at least one minute, ideally yep. for two minutes, as, as we just mentioned. Um, ideally, we want to brush your teeth every 12 hours, but the goal is to brush them for th three times a day. So okay. basically after each meal. Wait, uh, 30 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, n number three, exactly, to just wait for at least 20 minutes, ideally 30 minutes after you actually been eaten okay. to brush your teeth, just to avoid um, any enamel erosion, just to wait for your saliva to rebalance the, the pH of your, of your mouth. Um, definitely go and see your dentist for a for, for professional clean at least every six months, I would say as well, very, very important. And also, I would say, don't forget to also brush all the um, adhesion air off to the teeth. So don't forget your, your tongue, don't forget your, um, your gums, and don't forget to also brush your, the inside of your cheeks as well. Okay. I personally use a Fora ESA 3. I've got exactly in this color here. Um, and what I love about ESA 3 is that it really is such an easy four-in-one device. So it's very easy, because sometimes it's easy to say, oh, you should remember to, to brush your cheeks and gums and tongue, but if you need different devices for each area, it's easy to forget and you have to clean a lot, exactly. Mm -hmm. Whether the great thing that I found by using myself before ESA 3 and my children as well, is that it's, you have it all in one. So it's easy um, and, um, and it really does it all uh, for you in the most effective way. And what I also love about it is that it just fits um, with your brushing technique. So you just, yeah. you know, whichever way you have been used to brush your teeth, it's super effective and super gentle. So that's been my experience. Okay. So from your experience, manual or electric, which is the best to kind of be going for for some of the reasons that we've just said before? Yes, of course. So yeah, I haven't been recommending manual to brushes for a long time. So definitely go electric. I think okay. we're, we're so lucky nowadays to have electric to brush and incredible ones yeah. available. So definitely electric. They're more efficient, more effective, more hygienic. They give a more predictable way of cleaning. So I definitely would go electric. And I know for many watching, because they are an investment, what are the kind of things to be, what's the checklist? What should I look out for when I am thinking, right, I've been given the best guide. I've been following everything that you've been advising for. What features or benefits should I be looking for for a toothbrush? It's such a great question because I agree entirely. I think we, if some of you are not, not a professional, uh, you're completely overwhelmed with too much information. Too much options, yeah. Exactly, and unless you ask a professional, you are just trying to guess and you don't know what you don't know. So, uh, so thank you for asking me this. So mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so I, I would say in the electric toothbrush um, Rail world. Where, where planet, <laughs> yeah. exactly, you can either find the uh, nylon toothbrushes yep. or the silicone toothbrushes heads. So uh, the main difference, which actually it's, it's quite shocking. I'm sure people um, will be shocked as well when they when they realize is that the uh, silicon brush heads are 10,000 times more hygienic than the nylon one. Okay. 10,000, which is that's, huge. Yeah, that's a lot. Exactly. It just takes a moment to just realize how much more hygienic they are. Because again, you can have the most efficient, amazing toothbrush, but then if you 
don't keep it clean, if you don't remove the plaque, mm -hmm. it's almost like when you use again, you reapplying plaque on your teeth, um, right? So if you don't, so I would personally recommend to go for silicone, and that's why in my bathroom you will find the ESA three and in my in which color? bathroom as well. That I need to know. Yes. <laughs> I was, I've, got, okay. I've got two two small boys, so I've got all blue in my house, so I just, um, a bit of pink Balance. is in my bath, exactly. So I personally use the ESO3 because, because it's, it's, for many reasons, one is because it is um, silicon, mm -hmm. and the beauty of it is that you will find when you use it, is that it never gets uh, dirty or no. worn which is something that if you're a bit of OCD, uh, you know, hygiene freak sure, like myself, <laughs> exactly, you, it was just driving me insane and you, you just throw so many, so many heads and yeah. obviously that also is not good for the environment as well. No. If you if it's a pollutant planet with so much silicon, um, nylon. So the beauty of this is that you really, uh, yeah, it will never look that you want, which is a plus as well. The bit you mentioned about actually the toothbrush holding the plaque we're almost so focused always on just the teeth whereas we never actually yes. look at the modality of what is doing the work that yes. also needs some help to kind of work in top shape so that is a really good yes. point actually with the hygiene um, and something that you can forget about these you don't realize actually how much it is helping you along that journey you know what you're absolutely right and the thing is what some people think just get focused on obsess yeah. about which toothpaste to use mm -hmm. but actually the the benefit, the whole point of brushing the teeth is to removing mechanically the plaque from the teeth. That's motions. the whole point, exactly. So the uh, toothpaste is great because it just gives you like a um, fresh sensation in your mouth and it's, it's super pleasant. But the core of the work of, of brushing the teeth, that will do it for you. That is essentially, it's all what you need. Um, and, and that's why uh, for me, I use personally Lisa 3 because um, I know it just does it so predictably. Um, and I know if I brush my teeth between one and two minutes, um, it will do it effectively really well. So jumping on the toothpaste topic. Yes. That's another world, again, mm -hmm. which can be very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. For anyone watching, is there any tips to look out for in types of toothpaste that you would be using with your kind of favorite toothbrush? Yes, of course. Yeah, I exactly. I think again about the toothpaste. There's so um, so much information bombarded, yeah. um, and so my advice would be to it's good to to switch. I think mm -hmm. any you know brands have got some plus and minus ones, so it's great to to, to switch uh, toothpastes for sure. What, however, what I really strict to my to my patient to say is that don't stay away from the ones that contain microgranules. Mm -hmm because the risk is that um, they can actually almost like erode your enamel. Uh, so they say, you know, the whitening extra granule tooth toothpaste. Sadly, they, they can't chemically whiten the teeth. They can just f temporarily give you an illusion of by basically removing some enamel that your teeth will get whiter, but they mm -hmm. just remove the superficial stains. And what you risk is actually to damage your animals. So we'll say just stay away from those. And I think another myth that is that uh, is fading now, thankfully, is all the, the charcoal toothpaste. So the that black ones, remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was so much about it. And um, I'm, I'm quite pleased that they're not around so much anymore because, again, there was absolutely no point to use mm -hmm. um, those charcoal toothpaste. It was just an illusion for you to using uh, a black base that will basically make your teeth look whiter, complete an illusion. There was no uh, scientific base on actually whitening your teeth at all, so a waste of time. Okay, we're getting some debunking here, this is good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saving my time and money. I know many who've clicked onto this video to watch really want to take away as many benefits and pro tips as possible. What are some of the myths about flossing? Because I know this is a huge topic. Um, what can you share with us about that? Yes, of course. So guys, please do floss because I know that there was there was a myth going around, I don't know, a few few years ago that, you know, flossing wasn't needed anymore. Flossing is needed, absolutely, okay. because basically, uh, scientifically, what happens uh, that the plaque in between, uh, just the deposits first in between our teeth. Mm -hmm. So whenever we eat, it just goes in, we call it the interproximal uh, air in between our teeth. So even if you have uh, the most um, amazing toothbrush and you're brushing your teeth, for the correct amount of time mm -hmm. and uh, for the correct, you know, um, number of times as well, 
unless you mechanically and physically go and remove the plaque in, in between your teeth, mm -hmm. the plaque will stay there. Okay. And it will start to create the, we call it interproximal decays, which basically means um, all the, the bacteria are eating up uh, the plaque and they're creating decays and then if they're not treated, uh, progressively holes in between our teeth. So flossing is essential if you don't want to have decays, if you want to have healthy yep. teeth. <laughs> um, so what I normally recommend is, again, just to floss um, at least every 12 hours, so at least twice a day. So again, because the plaque takes 12 hours to, to deposit, so mm -hmm. if we remove it, um, it, won't, it won't get deposited. So flossing, absolutely yes. Twice a day, yes. Okay. Um, I'm a, a big believer in using the normal floss that you can use the waxed one okay. there's waxed and unwaxed if you have know um you know yeah <laughs> no. so um again if you have for example a very tight uh, teeth and you don't have any space the wax one may be more comfortable okay. and what i recommend is normally to get about 20 centimeters um to roll around your fingers um, and literally to to very very gently slide in between your teeth and then the essential point is once it's completely down, so make sure you just don't do it like that because then mm -hmm. you can damage your papilla, mm -hmm. which is the triangle of gums in between your teeth. So once it's there super gently, you do, we call it at C movement. So almost like hugging the, your, your, your tooth okay. underneath the gum. Oh, wow, okay. So the floss so has, exactly. So the floss has to go underneath the gum, hugging the root of, of, of the tooth. And then you like take it out. It and up and then correct, take it out. exactly. Okay. In that way, it just removes the plaque. Otherwise, if you just do it like that, it won't do the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that the C movement is essential. If you're out and about, you can use you know the flossing sticks. Uh -huh. Like if you don't have time to to you know those can be used. But as soon as you go home, at least once a day, if you can floss it, that would be amazing. So I've learned a lot already and I'd love to also hear what you have taken away so far in the video. So if you can comment down below what was standout. For me, it's definitely the flossing and the method. I think it's something that we're naturally not taught enough about. Um, my next thing to get just more incredible information out of you. Of what uh, Do you feel that people really know enough about oral hygiene and are we taught enough about really how to look after our teeth? Definitely not. I think people are completely overwhelmed, yeah. overstimulated, overconfused by so much information. So I really actually should think that it should be taught at school because yeah. it's something so essential and it could actually prevent so many damages later on on the teeth and, and on the gums. So sadly, sadly not, sadly not. Okay. I know whitening is a kind of a, a large topic. I know everyone's wanting that Hollywood smile, that ultra like glow. Yes. Um, what are some of the drawbacks some of the dangers of that and what are some of your top tips for those who are going down that route and um, how to look after their teeth yeah absolutely because i mean literally everyone that comes into my clinic asks for whiter teeth and imagine. and sometimes it's a very difficult conversation because the teeth whitening cannot be done professionally if they don't have healthy t teeth mm -hmm. and if they don't have healthy gums so the health of the teeth and gums comes first before we can possibly whiten them okay. so um in terms of whitening there's um so you can either do it so what we recommend as professional to do it obviously professionally um in the surgery and is also much more effective because you we use higher percentages of uh, carbamide or hydrogen peroxide which is the chemically bleaching agent and okay. um, so what I recommend is just trust your uh, profession that the professional if your dentist says you can't have the whitening until your gums are perfectly healthy um, and your teeth are healthy just trust them because um, it has to be done properly, otherwise it can potentially uh, damage your, your teeth uh, or damage your enamel as well. Okay, so a bit of homework before you venture down the teeth whitening. Yes, okay. absolutely. One thing I'm still not over, and I'm sure everyone watching still is kind of on that, I genuinely cannot believe how much the brush head can actually hold. Yes. Like you said, it's all about removing that plaque, but that still can then exist on the brush head. Yes. For me to be after now very enthused to be the best that I can and everyone watching, what would be the optimum time of br changing a brush head? 
It's a very difficult answer in the sense that, you know, it, it, it depends. It depends in the sense that we normally, what you will find on paper, we say um, between two and three months. Yeah. But it could be if you were um, a very vigorous and enthusiastic brusher, you, um, you know, you might, you might have to change every month. Um, <laughs> so, um, and it also depends what you're using. If you're using a manual toothbrush made of bamboo or mm -hmm. made of nylon or silicon, it can differ entirely. So I would say as a, general rule whenever you see the whistles of your two fresh heads uh, either you know opening like this mm -hmm. or getting worn or getting dirty sometimes if you're using a uh, electric toothbrush made of nylon or a manual one mm -hmm. you can see the dirt that you can't rub it anymore then i would say just better to just change it because otherwise um going back to what we were doing before you can either literally reapply bacteria and plaque onto your teeth just very counterproductive yes, exactly. so as soon as you start seeing them kind of go yeah. a bit outwards that's when it's time to change the brush head yeah exactly precisely exactly because also what can happen is that once it's actually open up you you know you think you brush your teeth but those um, bristle can actually damage your gums. So yeah, whenever you see changing shape mm -hmm. or being dirty, just please change it, which could be uh, between one to three months, maximum four months. Okay. Before we were talking a bit about, which was great to have some debunking, make it a bit easier to kind of navigate through this yeah. oral hygiene world, yes. what you said about charcoal. Are there any myths that you still feel need to be debunked? And this is like the prime time to, yeah. to show our followers. Are there anything still that you think this is a myth that needs to be debunked and I can kind of share my commentary. Um, yeah, of course. I think there's still so much um, confusion about, you know, the um, perhaps toothpaste, whitening toothpaste mm -hmm. and, and home whitening. It's all very grey and people are just desperate to do something at home without paying the price going to a professional. Um, but equally, they just want the results. So I think what has to be explained very clearly is that the toothpaste cannot give you a chemical um, uh, whitening of your enamel like an uh, in-clinic professional mm -hmm. whitening procedure will. So it can just physically remove uh, the dirt. So it's not a whitening, it's like a, almost like abrasion, right? Okay. So by and you know, of course you can use those, those two faces as long as you, you can't expect a chemical whitening of the actual enamel and dent and it can be achieved professionally. Another thing is that all these whitening strips, I'm sure you've seen it all just as you're putting your makeup on, just whitening your teeth for yeah. your matter. I mean, again, um, absolutely, uh, there's no harm in using them, but what I think has to be super clear that the, the difference between those and the um, inkling professional mm -hmm. tooth whitening system is that the percentage is much, much different. So what you're using at home, it's minus the percentage of what I use professionally in the clinic. So um, again, in terms of, of, of results, um, you, can't, you can't compare. Right. Yeah. So when you mentioned in before with whitening, which I didn't really know that you really had to kind of have that overall level of of hygiene for both the gum and the tooth before having mm. an in-clinic whitening. Yeah. What are some of the tips that people can take away if they are wanting to go down that whitening route that they can already start implementing in their daily routine from watching this video? Yeah, yeah. So I think what I, what I would say is just make sure you um, taking care uh, of your teeth and your gum in the best possible way yourself at home. So just making sure you brush your teeth um, aiming for uh, three times a day, ideally, uh, for two minutes, ideally, um, that you go and see your dentist uh, at least every, every six months. It, you do floss as well. So if you um, make sure you maintain your teeth um, in the best condition, in, in the best healthy way, then it will be no problem to have a professional teeth whitening and then you get the best result and you can maintain the result easier. So I think the cosmetic comes after the actual oral health. So the core of the job, um, you worse. do it yourself at home mm -hmm. by using the correct flossing and toothbrush and toothpaste every day. Um, and it's a bit like with skincare, right? Like I normally, I normally do the other way around. I, I, I say, you know, the everyday skincare is like brushing your teeth every day. Yeah. There's no point to go and clinic to have a, a chemical peel or into a treatment if the core is not solid. Do you have to do the groundwork, which I think exactly. we all have to admit, sometimes we don't want to do and we expect a miracle that quickly, but already yes. you've saved us time and money de mm -hmm. demystifying that kind of need of just thinking a toothpaste is going to give us those results. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
So we have all the devices in front of us and to make it easier, we're just going to call it the Easter umbrella, everything under yes. it. <laughs> what has been your experience so far? Tell us mm -hmm. everything, what devices you've had, family, friends, anything. What about Issa, can you tell us? Yes, of course. So this is what you actually you will find in my um, family's uh, bathroom. So I personally use the uh, Issa 3 exactly in this color and I've been Adore doing it. so for, for quite a while. So personally, uh, genetically, I've got very thin gums and I found it out when I was at university doing dentistry um, in Italy and I actually uh, gave myself some gum recession by using the very first, it was almost 20 years ago, the very first electric nylon toothbrushes, uh, but it, they had they were so strong, they were effective, but they were, you know, they, the, the speed effective. was, exactly, <laughs> they were going on at too much speed and they were so aggressive, so sadly, I gave myself scan recession, so the beauty of this, what I personally love about this, is that, um, first of all, just to satisfy my uh, OCD cleaning um, <laughs> uh, side of myself, is that it never looks dirty or worn literally I've been having mine for a while and it looks exactly like this so um, it's so hygienic uh, which I love um, it's so uh, gentle as well so perfect for uh, my gums and whoever has thin gums as well um, and then it's so flexible and then I use it for it's a really four in one device so I don't use anything else I use this to clean also my tongue and my gums and my cheeks etc okay. so this is for me then my uh, I give to my husband of course the black one so he's got this one Love it. um i've got two children one is three one is seven so they use the um it's a kid's ones i actually uh they my three years old is quite small so he's using the baby one as well the baby <laughs> one it's so cute um so uh yeah for me it's it's a it's a no-brainer so that's that's exactly what my family uses for anyone watching who hasn't seen the it's a kid's device before this is one of my favorite features and though it is more for kids I uh, probably know too many adults that could also do with this, is they have the glee and glum, the little emojis that appear. Yeah. What has been your children's experience with that? Because that is something that I've never seen on a toothbrush before. It is genius because kids get bored. They, they don't naturally like, you know, brushing their teeth and it's yeah. boring. They do it for two seconds. And it's difficult for them to actually... Uh, teach them and train them to brush them for nearly two minutes yeah. but this is great because when they see they really want to obviously uh, get the, the the happy smiling face so that it's a great incentive for them to brush them for two minutes and again the, the kids are just you know creatures of habit as, as we are as well so um, the great thing is that that will train them to brush your teeth for long enough and then um, it just becomes becomes a habit and then they grow up with the brushing the teeth for the correct amount of time so it's a win-win. I like that you chose the midnight black uh, for your husband yes. that one got famous with Star Trek it was one of the first toothbrushes to be featured with oh. two guys so pretty famous I think out of any toothbrush that I've seen not even from working with Ferreira but even on the outside of it Mm -hmm. This is probably one of the most kind of out there devices and I think it yeah. just already sums up how out of this world it is for it to be on <laughs> Star Trek. Um, do you ever kind of get any reactions from people thinking how different it looks? That they almost kind of, there's some cynicism that comes with it or... Uh, they just fascinate sometimes. Oh, it looks fancy, but you <laughs> yeah. know they. Uh, and but what I love, I'm like, yeah, it does. But actually, and and I just go back to the science, and say, you know, it only looks fancy. But the reason why I chose it as a dental professional myself is because it's a four-in-one device. It's much more hygienic. Um, it's gentle. It's effective. It brushes my teeth in a predictable way, and I like things to be predictable. So we spoke about myths and debunking things, and I still to this day get people that still don't believe how long these last. So honestly, um, how long do you usually charge it for or when do you need to charge it? Um, yeah, so I charge it once a year as per instruction, which I know it's Not crazy. Normal. And even myself, no, I, I didn't believe in myself either when I was first, first told that was how long it was gonna last. But yeah, I try and test it myself. It is crazy, but yeah, I do uh, change the brush every six months, so twice a year mm -hmm. and charging once a year I mean this is it's it's the best news because obviously we we are so busy and we already have so many things to charge constantly yeah. and the the computer and the iPads and the phone so it is one less thing to stress and to worry about and it's great when I go on you know before Travel, when I was holiday. using exactly the other two brush you're like oh my goodness I forgot the heavy big bulky, bulky charges yes, charger. Uh, charge adapters things yes. like that again someone who goes to Europe very often lucky exactly um, <laughs> It's again, these little things that we 
-hmm. sometimes forget that kind of intuity with a device and that's actually yes. why uh, ESO when they uh, founded the device and created it they really looked from the ground up of what is actually wrong with devices what right. is actually things that people want right. and you know adding technology like this and the materials with your know-how yes you're sorted for oral hygiene totally and I, you know what you can really tell obviously they've been using for quite a while you mm -hmm. can tell that the way it's been built and created it was to solve problems yeah. for the customer yeah. um, it's almost like this is made to make your life easy in the most effective way to give you the most benefit so um, as I use and believe it's, it's a uh, range for me and my family I can totally um, see that I'm with you on that one <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. We went through a lot and I could not be more privileged than to sit down with you and, and pick the questions. Hopefully it was all the questions that you viewers wanted to see. If not, we would love to see in the commentary down below. Let us know what you found the most interesting. What were you shocked about? Be honest, because I was. I know we're not all perfect with oral hygiene, but it's all about debunking, demystifying myths, putting our investment where it needs to be and doing exactly. it properly. So thank you for being so honest as usual with it. And now we know exactly what is in Dr. Nina's bathroom. So we've had a little fly on the wall experience. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. As always, I just love having chats with you and I hope you guys found some value out of you know what we uh, discussed. And it's always a pleasure. Thank you again.